Nothing too detrimental going on. Everything's working its way closer. We'll make the sun, I don't know, a billion times hotter. I'm just kidding. We'll only about double it. It's about 6,000 Kelvin now. 12,000. And we've created a blue poof. This is the Earth. And today we can do pretty much anything we want to it. And it must be winter because not a single inch of Canada isn't buried under snow. For example, we can take a simple golf ball and launch it straight into Earth. Which looks like it's going to land directly in the ocean. Probably having a negligible effect. Okay, the Earth just swallowed that up without a problem. Luckily for us, we have a few more options. Like, say we take that golf ball and make it 10 times bigger, and then 10 times bigger again, and then 10 times bigger again. It looks pretty big from here, but when we zoom out and get it on the grand scale, it still doesn't really compare to Earth, despite the fact it might be the size of Texas. So what we'll do is just zoom out a little bit so we can get a kind of direct comparison to Earth itself, and make it a little bit bigger until it's, you know, maybe half the size of Earth, a quarter of the size of Earth, that should have more of a noticeable effect. Now all I need to do is press play and we'll watch the magic unfold. We'll maybe speed it up just a little bit because we don't have all day. That should be a good speed. Yeah, it had more of an effect. I didn't even see where it hit and the thing fragmented everywhere. And the impact was basically somewhere on Earth. I think Canada probably thought out by now. And the fragments go into space. Not likely to hit anything, but we can kind of see where this goes for just a minute. They'll probably mostly all just kind of gather into orbit nicely and start following everything else around the galaxy. The golf ball itself seems to have ricocheted. It didn't explode. It's a bouncy one. Earth's orbit itself doesn't really seem to be very affected. It's still in the galaxy, and that's saying something. Because so far about 105% of my experiments have caused the galaxy to fail entirely. One of the fragments just left again, and the golf ball itself has become a planet. It's taken its own little orbit somewhere between Mercury and Earth, I think. But this somehow isn't good enough for me. What we're going to do is make the golf ball just a little bit bigger again. It is a golf ball, so it probably doesn't have a huge amount of weight. On the grand cosmic scale, it doesn't look that impressive. It's just kind of orbiting, nothing's happening, it's not pulling anything else out of its gravitational pull. On the bright side, I have created a new planet successfully. It is a golf ball, but it still counts. So let's maybe go 100 times bigger. Would that have an effect? 10 times, 100 times. Keeping an eye on it. So far nothing. So bigger. 1000 times. 10 times, 10 times, oh, okay, that was one too many. I think it became bigger, so everything started orbiting it. Yeah, the sun seems to be stopping in every once in a while to say hi. And Hygieia, Iris, and Eumonia, Pneumonia, have also kind of left into space. Venus is still hanging out for now. Now, the sun obviously has started moving. Uh, it's now orbiting the golf ball. I'm not really sure how much that physically changed it. Its temperature is 4,000 degrees Celsius, and I have no idea exactly what that means. But I kind of want to see what happens if we combine the sun with the golf ball. It is getting closer, but I think we'd have to do quite a few more orbits before it got there. Luckily for us, I'm steering this ship. So if we make the golf ball 10 times bigger, maybe 10 times bigger again, that should suck the sun in pretty quickly. And what do we got? Oh, okay. I didn't know golf balls had that particular quality. They absorb anything they touch, and Vesta's coming in too. Everything's coming in. It's sucking in from a long ways out. I might have made this just a bit too big. Jupiter and Uranus are now making a beeline for it. Neptune's even starting to curve in. I think they'll all make their way in if we turn up time just a bit. Nope, they're kind of bouncing off the orbit, but they're still coming inwards. And the golf ball has a trajectory of its own. I'm not sure if that's because the sun hit it and knocked it about, but it's going that way for now. Everything else is coming toward it. So let's make it just a touch bigger. And I don't work in increments less than a 10 times multiplier. That got really big really fast. And I'm not actually speeding up the simulation. It's just pulling stuff in that much quicker. Every once in a while, something goes zooming past. Oh, that was just Neptune. Oh, I think we got one. I'm pretty sure the golf ball gets bigger every time it eats something. So let's see what else we can feed it. Radius times 10 and times 10 again. I better slow the simulation down just a bit so we can actually watch the universe end rather than it blink away. Somehow now Earth is coming back to it. Did we launch Earth earlier? I don't think we did. I don't know how it got into space, but it's now returning to its proper home in the golf ball. Already, the mass of our golf ball is 1.5 times the mass of the Milky Way galaxy, so I might have got a little bit carried away a little bit quickly. But when in doubt, make things bigger. There's another thousand times mass. So how big exactly can we go with this? Say we zoom way, way out to a cosmic scale. To a number that's so big, I don't quite understand. And then we'll crank this bad boy up to a billion. A trillion. 20 times the Milky Way galaxy in mass. It is now this much times the Milky Way galaxy. This is the max size, as big as a golf ball can conceivably get in the universe. They have scientifically proven this in this game. So we're setting things and taking the golf ball out of the equation. What other fun things can we do with the galaxy? We basically have unlimited options here. We can do anything we want and see the effect. 
I think what we need are more planets orbiting the sun. Then we triple the amount of planets. Let's see what that does. We'll even put them basically in their own orbit. Uh, Mercury passes by here once in a while, so we'll throw a few more of those down there. Then Venus, a planet everyone forgets. Then Earth, and then we'll kind of see what that does for a few minutes. I'm putting them pretty close to their actual orbit, so it shouldn't have a drastic effect. But I said that about the golf ball, and then the universe ended. So far, nothing too drastic is happening. The Mercuries are kind of fighting it out. I'm not sure if they're supposed to be doing that or not. Sometimes it does feel like they're getting awfully close to each other, but then once you actually zoom in and look at them, well, they're not that close. Anyways, where were we? We just added Earth, so we gotta go to Mars. I like how it actually does them in order, so I can pretend like I know the order of the planets. There's three Mars, and onto Jupiter, the big boy. And so we'll just put a few out there anyways, mostly because we can. Okay, so now that we've uh, sufficiently boned the galaxy, let's speed it up just a touch to see if that has any noticeable effect on things. So far things are looking pretty normal. I know some of these outer planets look like they're taking a really wild ride, but the farther out they are, the more they're gonna deviate. Pluto? Did I forget about Pluto? Actually, I am just a little bit curious about some of these Jupiters. They are the biggest planet, so they should have the most effect on gravity. And as they get closer to the sun, weird things might happen. I mean, the sun does seem to be moving through space at this point. Not sure if it's supposed to do that or not. The only effect so far of tripling every planet is making the sun do this. And I'm not really sure if it even does that normally anyway. Does the sun really make that sound when you get close? We're gonna throw some Plutos in there too. Can you really blame me though? Look how far out it is. So we've effectively tripled the planets in the galaxy. We've gone from 10 to 30. And so far the sun is just kind of spiraling this way. If we let it go long enough, will it... Yeah, it's kind of taking a weird... Earn. It doesn't really know what it's doing. On the grand scale of the galaxy though, everything is okay overall. So obviously what we need are more planets, and like a lot more. I'm thinking we say double the amount of planets again, we're gonna add three more. Oh, that was three more each, not just three more in total. Three more of every planet. Because I feel like 60 planets is a much better number to have in our galaxy, I've always thought that. I know how like one minute ago I said the galaxy was fine, but it turns out Sedna just didn't want to be here anymore. Everything else still hanging in there for now. Now that we've doubled the amount of planets, what is the sun gonna do? We'll speed things up just a little bit to take a look. I think we might have actually fixed the sun somehow. Adding more planets might have made it more calm. No, it's still kind of going in its squiggly weird pattern just depending on where the planets around it are. So, more planets. And since the game is still running fine, I'm going to add 10 more of everything. And yeah, I'm going to have to start guesstimating just a little bit on where exactly their actual orbit is. Because they're starting to deviate just a little bit from what I suspect their natural orbit would be. And there we are, just added 100 new planets to the solar system. So far so good, this is at low speed of course, we need to ease things into it. I'm not even sure how fast I'll be able to run this because I can only add so many things before the game's gonna crash. Normally I can't go 5 minutes in this game without completely annihilating everything, so this is going surprisingly well. We put a lot of crap into the solar system. Look at all the Plutos. In order to make this work more like it normally would, would I make the sun bigger or smaller? Probably bigger to counter the extra gravity of all the other planets? That makes sense to me, right? Okay, we're gonna make the sun twice as big? Twice the size, twice the mass. Now we'll resume. Whoa. Okay. Uh, yeah, we wanted to see Sedna. That's absolutely right. Oh, it's coming back. It's going to make a big orbit. And we'll kind of ease things into it. Sun twice the size. Hundreds of new planets in the galaxy. Just a little bit quicker. I think it's probably going to suck their orbits in a little bit. I don't know if anything's going to directly hit the sun or not, but they're definitely going to be a lot closer than they want to be. Well, that's not bad. As I suspected, everything is just kind of working its way in closer on a little bit of a tighter orbit. I don't know if anything's ever actually going to hit the sun. Getting a little bit hard to tell exactly where things are, but the different colors are different planets of orbit. Some have an elliptical orbit, some like Mercury, make a nice tight donut. Yeah, you know what, from up close, it doesn't really look that bad. Everything's just kind of staying in its lane. Uh, the sun, however, is moving around, but that's okay because everything just follows the sun anyways. The problem here now is things tend to have an exponential effect. If I make it twice as big, it's four times as big as the original, and that's really going to start to suck things in. So we're going to do that and see how that goes. The sun is four times as big as its original size, and things are getting wild. It's a little hard to keep track of all the planets, but some of the planets that shouldn't be nearby are nearby now. Like Earth. Earth is coming in awfully close. Mars. Yeah, Mars is coming in from out there. Nothing gets closer than this though, yet. Let's uh, fast forward and see exactly where things settle. It definitely looks very nice. Uh, nothing's exploding yet, which is odd. Definitely gonna take a while for those mostly outer planets to make their way all the way in. They got such a big long orbit. The sun's still doing its thing, kind of worming through space. Alright, well let's go uh, two times bigger with the sun. Uh oh. Wait, where'd the sun go? I didn't save. Mercury? No, I want the sun. Uh, we might have killed the sun. Uh, okay, we'll just kind of press play and see where things go now. Because, 
Uh, right. Everything just gets ejected outwards. Yeah, I guess without the gravitational pull, everything just continues on in a direct straight line on whatever trajectory it was because the sun isn't around anymore. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think we've succeeded in doing what we wanted. I don't really know what our original goal was there, but... I should be in charge of the galaxy, that's evident. I think maybe we should ease the sun into bigger stages at that point. I figured going by times two would do that essentially, but apparently not. So let's take a little step back to where we we're right here. Let's do something else to this sun. But as long as you do it incrementally, it seems okay with everything. So far, its new mass seems to be having little effect at all. Everything's moving on inwards, but still nothing outrageous. So maybe what we'll do is change it to two times the mass of the regular sun and also double its density. It's currently at that, so we're going to go to 100 and kind of see what that does. And I'm not really sure I'm a fan of this uneven number. 1.83 million is going to become 2 million. And the sun disappeared again. When it gets too big, it just evaporates because that's what celestial bodies do. We've now made the sun much, much denser and heavier. It should have more of a gravitational pull without increasing the size. It seems to be the size that it doesn't like to do. Yep, that's working pretty good. Everything's getting way close in there. None of the planets have collided yet, and I still doubt they will. There are hundreds out there, but... They're very small and space is very big. If they get in closer with a whole bunch of them, yeah, we might get some collisions. So far, so good. Nothing too detrimental going on. Everything's working its way closer. We'll make the sun, I don't know, a billion times hotter. I'm just kidding. We'll only about double it. It's about 6,000 Kelvin now. 12,000. And we've created a blue poof. All I've really learned so far is that we should not mess with our sun in any way, shape, or form. You do anything to this thing and it just poofs into space. And if that actually happens in real life, we're going to have a bit of a problem. Maybe we're just not going big enough. The sun probably poofs at a certain size or temperature. What happens if we go so big? Does it turn into a black hole or a galaxy in itself? Instead of being three times the size of the normal sun, let's say it's this many suns. And go. I think it's a black hole. I guess it probably just, yeah, it would have absorbed the entire galaxy all in one shot. So that might have been a little bit overkill. But the sun did survive. That was what I was trying to do. So mission accomplished. There's just nothing else going on because we're just... Probably a pretty big black hole in space. Okay, well since the sun is being such a whiny crybaby about things, try the planets. Now if I can find Earth somewhere out there, but let's go ahead and make it bigger. Let's make it 10 times bigger to see what that does. Every time you zoom out, it doesn't look big enough, but if you make things big enough to see zoomed out, it just black holes everything. And does this increase the radius where all Earth is or just this one? There's so many questions I don't know the answer to. Whoops. Uh, we've made a blue ball of fire out of the Earth. Is it a rocket now? I don't know what this is, but I like it. Earth is now absorbing all the other planets, strangely. The sun couldn't even do that. Our sun is such a baby. Earth is the way to go. I'm gonna mess with this from now on. If we take the trails away, it really looks cool. We still got a lot of planets out there for it to eat, but I think eventually it's gonna collide with the sun in a big way. And all the planets are now going into the sun for some reason. I'm not really sure what I did, but I definitely boned the galaxy once again. Look at those orbits. Yeah, there's nothing very nice about any of this at all. I wonder what happens when these two are gonna collide then? Do they make like a super Earth? Beating things up just a touch to see exactly where things wind up. See, the sun is actually moving now, and I don't know why. Oh, the sun's coming over here now. These two are circling each other. They're gonna fight it out. Earth versus the sun but both slightly modified. This isn't really what Earth looks like. The sun definitely seems to be eating more of the planets, and I think that's increasing its mass, but both of these are circling each other. Looks like I might need some increased mass to suck in all these planets. Some of them are getting pretty far out there, but I think once these two collide, it should have quite an event. Well, let's go ahead and make the Earth, say, twice as big, and see if that directs the sun more into it. I really want to see what happens when these two collide. So what we'll do now is maybe double the mass, Mm, this is three times the size of the original sun, but we're not really dealing with the original sun. We'll go five times the sun. I did successfully reverse the colors of things. The sun is blue and earth is red. I think what I need to do is create an imbalance. The sun is currently three times the size of the original sun and the earth is five. One isn't so much bigger than the other that it sucks the other one in. So we're going to change earth to say ten times the original sun, which should be three times the sun I believe currently. That might actually draw it in for a little collision. And little is a relative term here. Okay, since I still want to play nice, we're going to go plus 50% mass again. So 15 times the sun. Earth now. I got to try and work in increments here. Remember that if I go two times size, everything just blows up suddenly. We go from getting results to gone. I know gassy it is. I kind of want to remove the gas just so I can see it. But will they collide? They might. Oh, I think they touched. We rubbed paint. Oh, wait. No, I got something off that. I don't know what all the glowy things are. We've created orbs, which are now circling Earth. We're like stealing mass from it as we go. What are those? Fragments? Yeah, they had a little collision and it was a partial. They barely exchanged insurance information before going about their day. And that looks like it kind of boned the orbit. 
Can we put the trails back to see exactly what direction they're heading? Uh, no, it looks like the sun's gonna come back in, which should be interesting. Eventually, they might have a direct collision. I want to see them combine. I'm sick of these fragments. Oh, is it gonna do it? Nope. Rub and paint every time. Earth did naturally increase its mass by 0.6, probably from all the fragments joining it. At this point, it's just a glowing ball of... I don't, I don't know what this is. A glowing ball of Earth. So at 20 times mass, it should have more of a direct hit with the sun. Yep, there we go. That's better. And go. I think we might have a collision. Earth Nova Remnant. And it's just... Wow, is it really that bright? Uh-oh. Yeah, I think I've created something bad. It's a great glowy ball of gas in the sky. Well, hold on. It's turning into something else, I think. I don't, I don't know what it, this is. It's just a sun now. Earth Nova Remnant, but also the sun. I've combined them into one super bright light bulb in the sky. Now I think the only option we really have at this point is to fire something even bigger and heavier directly into this thing to see what that creates. I'm thinking we'll use some kind of large asteroid, which is actually a moon, but we'll call it an asteroid, and that's going to fire directly at our big Earth thing. Uh, it's going to spawn right here. That'll be its collision course and we'll make it really big because right now by comparison obviously as you can see you can't see it. I'm trying to get a bit of a look for proper scale but basically you can't even see it. It is right here but it's just invisible compared to the sun, the super sun earth. So we gotta crank this thing up until it's big enough that it dwarfs the sun thing. I'm not really sure I like how bright it is already. That might be because it's super hot from being so close to whatever that thing is. Let's go maybe just 10 times bigger than... Yeah, maybe that was a bit overkill, but you know what? The Battle of Wills. We'll see who takes this one. Not sure how much the game's gonna love this one, but we're gonna give it a try in super slow motion. I suspect it's probably just gonna get, you know, nicely absorbed because that thing is huge huge but this thing's got a lot of burning energy so who knows what's gonna happen it might crash that's kind of where my money's at these days and gone well that was anticlimactic uh oh okay so this thing's really glowing now what happens if we fire something even bigger at this thing i think i've created my very own blue star and quite a big one at that because it seems to be you know the size of like the galaxy and it changes color depending on what side you look at i think there's only one thing that can be our savior and defeat the earth nova remnant and that's a golf ball that's 10 times the size of the thing the game's getting a little slow at this point not sure much is gonna like this experiment also it might be hard to kind of scale this at this point because the game really is an enjoying things so, oh no there we go actually that wasn't so bad now we have a golf ball that's quite a bit bigger than the other thing so we'll maybe let that go and see what happens easy does it the game's probably not going to move super quickly at this point. Uh, yeah, it's, we'll see if we can go you know, just a little more speed. I probably should have cleared out some of those other planets that are, whoa, back towards home. And it launched something and we ate it. Yeah, the golf ball wins. It's like the ultimate trump card. Although we do have a fragment out there for some reason, but I think it's coming home too. Nope, it's going through the golf ball. Wow. I don't know what these things are made out of, but they built them right. So we went all the way from a normal, straightforward, functioning galaxy to a Earth Nova Remnant circling a golf ball somewhere out in space. Which kind of begs the question, if we take my little super galaxy full of planets and replace the sun with a golf ball, what happens then? I've effectively got a regular golf ball within the sun itself. I guess I'm just going to have to make it bigger until it eats the sun, which is going to make it a big sun in itself, I think. So yeah, that should be great, actually. Easy does it. 10 times, 10 times, 10 times, 10 times. Eventually, it'll pop right out of that sun, I think. It's got to be bigger than the sun or the sun's going to eat it, I think. I saw it move. 10 times. There we go. Now, I've replaced the sun with a golf ball. Not entirely sure what this is going to do when I press play. I'm not sure if the sun is still in there. I do think it is, but the golf ball is bigger at this point. So one's going to win out over the other. Maybe slow time down just a bit so we can watch this in slow motion. And without further ado, play. Oh, okay. So it actually just swallowed the sun without much problem at all. Now, what's that going to do to all the... Oh. Oh, dear. These golf balls are just a completely destructive force. They're like the nuke of space. Nothing can defeat it. So yeah, we made the sun way bigger, hotter, denser. Just kind of drew the planets inwards. You're replaced with a golf ball though when the universe ends. If we go into chart form, we can actually see all the planets that still exist out there. We've got all these working their way out further and further. Uh, from our golf ball, of course. If we make the golf ball super hot now, will it turn back into a sun? It's at 6300 Celsius. So let's go with like a billion trillion Celsius. Boom. It's just indestructible. It's now a super hot golf ball, but that doesn't make a difference. What about if we launch another golf ball at the golf ball? Would that do anything fun? Just gotta get them to approximately the same size. Mm, that might be as close as we're gonna get nicely. And you know what? That's just fine by me. The ultimate battle. The monster mega indestructible golf balls colliding in space. Ooh, we get the ultra slow-mo with this one. This'll be good. And kerblam! Oh. 
Well, of course it does. It just eats it. And everything else nearby. It's eating all the Mars. Jupiter's coming in. More Mars. Jupiter and Saturn from out there are coming in. We could probably speed the game up now because it's eating everything anyway. There's nothing left to spawn or, you know, model. Oh, it's moving. Where are we going? This single golf ball is going to destroy the universe. She's just going to wander space for endless time. Eventually, it will become the universe because everything will be inside of it. Okay, well, that was fun. I can't wait to see what other kind of stupidity we come up with.